Hi everyone. In this video, we will be going over the backtracking algorithm. Backtracking solves problems that involve exploring various options to find a solution. It's effective for puzzles such as Sudoku, crosswords, and queens, search like maze solving, pathfinding, optimization like scheduling, resource allocation, combinatrix that would be for permutations or combinations. Essentially, any problem where you need to try out different choices and undo them if they don't work out can be tackled with backtracking. Backtracking is a problem solving technique where you first choose, select a potential solution or part of a solution, explore, recursively try extending the chosen solution, reject, if the extension leads to a dead end, undo the choice, repeat, Continue exploring other choices until a solution is found or all possibilities are exhausted. So think of it like navigating a maze. You try different paths and if you hit a wall, you backtrack to the last intersection and try a different route. So most backtracking problems follow this code logic or template. The function takes the current state of the problem. If the state is a valid solution, return it. Next, we iterate through possible choices for the current state. We then apply a choice to get the next state. If the next state is valid, recursively call solve. If the recursive call returns a solution, return it upwards. If no solution is found, return null to signal backtracking. Now, let's delve into the classic n-queens puzzle and demonstrate how this core logic can be applied to solve it. The n queens puzzle requires placing n queens on an n by n chessboard in such a way that no queen can attack or threaten each other. This problem is a classic example of backtracking and, in my view, crucial for anyone aiming to understand backtracking. For this chessboard, n is equal to 8, totaling 64 squares or cells. I'll designate row numbers and column alphabets in the standard chessboard convention. So let's consider the placement of a queen at position 4D. Adhering to the standard rules of chess, no other queen can occupy the same row, column, diagonal or anti-diagonal as this one, otherwise they threaten each other. Our goal is to place a total of n queens while honoring these constraints. This is one solution to the problem. If you observe closely, none of the queens are threatening each other. Or this could be another arrangement and solution to the problem. Essentially, there could be more than one solution to this problem and we have to arrive at a solution. I have reduced the board size to 4x4 and indexed it as though it were a two-dimensional array. This is the minimum size of n for which a solution exists. There is no solution for a board size where n is less than 4. We will use recursion and backtracking to solve the problem. If you would like a quick refresher on recursion, then please do check out the video that I have linked below. To frame this as a recursive problem, we break it down into smaller subproblems. That is to find a safe cell in column 0, followed by column 1, 2 and 3. So we actually have four subproblems. We will initially attempt to place the first queen in the first column, starting at row 0 and column 0. After successfully placing it, we will recursively solve the problem for the second column. These two cells are not safe, but this cell right here is safe for the second queen. Every time we attempt to place a queen, we'll call the isSafe function which will take the current column as a parameter and return a bool to indicate whether the queen can be safely placed there or not. We will discuss the isSafe function in more depth shortly, but in a sense, the approach involves the following steps. Examine each row in columns before the current column. Determine whether another queen occupies the same row, diagonal or anti-diagonal. Next, we will recursively solve the problem for the third column. None of the cells in the third column are safe because of either a row or a diagonal conflict. We backtrack by removing the third queen from the board and returning false to the function call for the second column. We will re-attempt to place the second queen in the next safe cell and once again tackle the subproblem for the third column. Now, the third queen can be securely placed in this cell. We will recursively solve the problem for the fourth column. 
none of the cells are safe for the fourth queen. We'll backtrack by removing the fourth queen from the board and returning false to the calling function of the third column. We will re-attempt to place the third queen, but none of the cells are safe. We will backtrack by removing the third queen and returning false to the calling function of the second column. The second queen has run out of options. We will backtrack by removing the second queen and returning false to the calling function of the first column. We will retry by placing the first queen in the next row. It will repeat the entire process to recursively solve the subproblems in the second, third and fourth columns. Placing the first queen in the second row of the first column enables the successful placement of the remaining queens. So hopefully this example provides an insight into the workings of backtracking. Let's go over some topics we need to cover before reviewing the code. Up next, we'll go over how we represent the chessboard, detect row conflicts, and go over a chessboard property for diagnosing diagonal conflicts. How can we represent the chessboard in code? One obvious approach is to represent it as a two-dimensional array of size n, and it closely mimics its physical layout. Now, is there a way to represent the chessboard more compactly? How about if we use a one-dimensional array of size n? In this representation, the index of the array indicates a column, while the value at each index signifies the row where the queen is positioned. This representation is feasible due to the constraint that we cannot have more than one queen in a column. Without this restriction, a two-dimensional array would have been necessary. I believe representing the code as a one-dimensional array significantly enhances the elegance of the overall code. Once we delve into the coding section, you'll see how this approach simplifies the implementation. Before we move further along, if you're enjoying this video, could you please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel? Your feedback is also welcome. Feel free to leave any questions or comments. Making videos like this is quite involved and your support will encourage me to create more content to help others as well. Thank you so much. Consider a scenario where we have successfully placed three queens and updated their row values in the board array. Our objective is to now position the fourth queen in a safe cell. Whenever a queen is placed in a cell, its row value is updated in the board array. We scan the row numbers of all the columns before the current column. If any of these row numbers match, it indicates a conflict. For example, observe the row conflicts as I move the fourth queen across all the rows. Let's go over a chessboard property to detect diagonal conflicts. Let's select two cells, the first at row 0, column 0 and the second at row 2 and column 2. Are these two cells on the same diagonal? While it's visually apparent that these cells are part of a diagonal, can we use their row and column numbers to confirm this? If the absolute difference of row numbers is equal to the absolute difference in column numbers of the two cells, then they are on the same diagonal. Let's apply this formula to these two highlighted cells. Both sides of the expression evaluate to 2 and so they are on the same diagonal. Consider this other cell at row 2 and column 1. Is this in diagonal with the first cell? Let's apply the same formula, so absolute of 0 minus 2 and compare it to the absolute of 0 minus 1. 2 is not equal to 1 and so they are not part of the same diagonal. Let's explore one more example. Are these two cells on the same diagonal? Let's compare the absolute of 2 minus 3 to the absolute of 0 minus 1 which is equal to 1 and so they are. This formula works for anti-diagonals as well. Please take a moment to experiment with the concept on your own to make sure you fully understand it. In our backtracking algorithm, as we place queens in cells, we'll check for conflicting queens along diagonals and anti-diagonals using this property. Next, we'll review the code starting with a look at the isSafe function. The isSafe function takes the board and the current column as parameters and returns a boolean. Within our function, we'll iterate over all columns before the current column. If board of i equals to the board of current column, it indicates that both queens are in the same row and so will return false. Next, we'll check the diagonal and anti-diagonal. 
if current column minus i is equal to the absolute difference between board of current column and board of i, we'll return false. This code checks if queens are on the same diagonal by applying the principle we discussed earlier regarding the properties of a chessboard. If we iterate through all the columns up until the current column without any conflicts, we'll return true. Let's proceed to review the remaining code to solve the n queens problem. The solve n queens function takes n as a parameter. Next, we represent the chessboard as an array of size n filled with dashes. It then calls the place queen function with the board n and 0 to indicate the first column. If all the queens have been placed successfully, it will print out the final board. This recursive function tries to place a queen in the column of the chessboard represented by the board parameter. It checks if the column is equal to n, which means all queens are placed successfully and returns true in this case. For each row in the current column, it sets the value of board of column to row. It then checks to see if it's safe to place a queen in the current column of the board and makes a recursive call to place the queen in the next column. If both the function calls are successful, it returns true. Otherwise, it resets the board of column to dash or removes the queen from that position and continues the loop to try the next row. If it's not able to place n queens, it returns false. And this would be true where n is less than 4. You should definitely try it out for yourself. I've also included the link to this code in GitHub down below. The time complexity of this algorithm is O of n to the power of n. The place queen function tries to place a queen in each of the n rows for every column, leading to n recursive calls per column. If a placement fails, the algorithm backtracks and tries the next possible placement, potentially exploring all n to the power of n configurations in the worst case. The space complexity is O of n due to board storage and recursion stack. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in my next one. Goodbye.